If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello, Magic Community on YouTube. I'm T1 Glistenrelf, here with T1 Stoneforge Mystic, T1 Baby Bear. It's my daughter, Evangeline. While I have her, I'm just going to do a quick walk and talk, a uh, response video, actually to a couple videos made by uh, Kevin from Rogue Deck Builder, and uh, I they're not terribly recent, but I can't help that I saw them just recently. Um, his, what he would want banned in modern, and what he would want unbanned in modern videos. Um, this was before I of Ugin was banned. He did call for that. It was banned. I mean, it was that or Temple, and I lost the coin toss, and he won it, so... There we go. Um, we'll, we'll get to the other cards to be banned in just a sec. He wanted Jace the Mind Sculptor unbanned. He wanted uh, Splinter Twin unbanned. He's a Soul Sisters player though, so um, when Scissors says that Rock should be banned, take note. Um, and then, let's see. Oh, he wanted a uh, Stoneforge Mystic. I was about to say Demonic Tutor. <laughs> sort of is, actually. Uh, Stoneforge Mystic, it's Demonic Tutor that puts Batter Skull in without it being cast. Uh, needless to say, I do not agree with him on those, on any of those for being unbanned, actually. Um, sorry. Um, I mean, he's a Soul Sisters player, so you can see why he'd want Splinter Twin unbanned, why he'd want Stoneforge Mystic unbanned. Um, because he likes the Splinter Twin match, and he can use Stoneforge Mystic in a white, like, tempo-ish deck. Or it can be a tempo deck, I suppose. Um, but one of the cards that he called for being banned was Glistener Elf or Ink Moth Nexus. One of the two. I of Ugin, yeah, that, that could be banned, obviously. That or Temple, I of Ugin makes more sense, looking back at it. Uh, Simeon Spirit Guide was another one he called for. I get that. If Crow Mox is banned, Simeon Spirit Guide also makes sense to ban. Fair enough. I'm not sure I agree with that. Um, I think they're different enough that it makes sense that Crow Mox should be banned, but not so much. Uh, Simeon Spirit Guide, but that's a whole nother video, and maybe I'll make that video at some point. That's an idea. Remind me of that, okay? Let me, don't let me forget. Um, but Glistener Elf or Ink Moth Nexus being banned? I disagree with that 100%. Um, especially Glistener Elf being banned. Especially that. I think if you want to gimp Affinity, uh, now if they were trying to nerf Affinity, then one way that they could go about doing that is banning Ink Moth Nexus, and it would be kind of like banning Eye of Ugin. Eye of Ugin didn't just work on uh, Eldrazi, it also hit Tron. They might do something similar with Ink Moth Nexus, but Mox Opal to me makes more sense. Um, but that being the case, uh, I'm going to ignore Ink Moth Nexus for just a moment and talk about Glistener Elf. <laughs> hey there. Hey there. <laughs> Hi. Showing off her her bare hands. Her bare hands, ha. Huh? I'm working on my dad jokes. Can you tell? <laughs> Still waving. Alright. Um, Glistener Elf, I think it's not only not a broken card in modern, but he's also, I say he, I guess the regular one's a he and then the promo's a she, I think. I don't know, whichever. They, it. <laughs> Glistener Elf. I just had you know. Glistener Elf, I think, is actually causing my arm to get tired. <laughs> necessary in modern. And I, I mean necessary. A car Glistener Elf and similar extremely fast strategies, I think, are necessary for modern. Because, so a little bit of background, a lot of people don't understand uh, the turn four rule in modern. There's a an unwritten it's actually probably written somewhere. 
term for rule, it's an R&D, uh, for modern. And it goes something like this. It's not your deck can't win before turn four. Like, if you think about that for just a moment, obviously that's not the rule in modern. They let a lot of decks that can win before turn four exist. It's three parts. You can't win before turn four, that's one. Consistently, that's two. Without allowing for interaction, that's three. So, in fact, can win before turn four, turn two or three, check. Now, granted, turn two is not all that likely. Um, but yes, it's certainly possible. Uh, consistently. Consistency is a hard enough thing to do in modern now that a lot of the good draw spells are not, there's no ponder, there's no preordain. If you're running infect, what, like Gitaxian Probe? And you could run some other stuff, Serum Vision, Sleight of Hand, that sort of thing. But generally, that's about it. That's where it's at. You have, it's hard to do that consistently. Plus, Playing an Infect deck is sort of like playing any deck, really, for the most part. <laughs> I'm thinking of exceptions as I'm saying this, but it's like putting together a recipe, right? You need X parts this, Y parts that, Z parts the other. So, for example, in Infect, you need at least a creature, you need at least a land, one or two, and the rest can be pump spells. But if you don't have those, then you can't go off. This makes Infect less consistent than other decks that only require two different types of things. That is a donkey. That loud noise that sounds like a horn, that's a donkey. It's annoying. Uh, we don't need those, we don't need a rooster to wake us up, we have a donkey. Uh, well, we don't, but our neighbors do. Uh, something like uh, Jund, for instance, or Junk. You need lands, creature. That's all you really need. It would be nice to have more than just two lands and a Tarmogoyf, or six lands and a Tarmogoyf, and you shouldn't keep a hand like that, but you can only, you can have a hand with only lands and creatures and get by. Um, you know, that's the case for a lot of decks in the format, actually. That's the case for Stompy, that's the case for Junk, that's the case for, I don't know, Soul Sisters, even. Uh, what are you doing? I'm gonna switch you back. There we go. When one arm gets tired. Uh, so, in that sense, Infect has an, a consistency issue, but it isn't too great. Where it really gets hit is interaction. Uh, I don't think that anything has changed since the last 20 times I checked on MTG uh, Goldfish. But the most played card in Modern, played card, is Lightning Bolt. Now, if you play Infect in a format where the most played card is a one-drop removal spell, you are brave. You are... you know what you're getting yourself into. And th this is why sometimes Tom Ross will move away from playing... I mean, Tom Ross has played Soul Sisters relatively recently um, at a competitive level event instead of Infect. Part of that, I'm sure, is that whenever someone plays against him, he gets a disadvantage, you know. They know he's on Infect. Except when they don't. What are you looking at? Something like this. Um, but part of that is because removal, cheap removal, is very good in this format. Uh, I would venture to guess that Path to Exile is in the top three most played cards. Uh, if not top three, then top five. And if Lightning Bolt and Path to Exile are cards you have to deal with all the time, like one and or the other in every match, that, that's an issue. Infect has a very difficult time dealing with cheap removal from players who know what they're doing. Um, I, I like to think of Infect as being the kind of deck where the difference between amateurs at the deck, and I don't mean this to sound condescending, but uh, neophytes, uh, people that are new to this strategy. Uh, the difference between them and more experienced players is that the new players will just try to jam it all in as quickly as they possibly can, and then they'll get blown out. <laughs> they'll play Glistener Elf, and then they'll play Might of Old Crosa Lightning Bolt. That's the two for one. Um, more experienced players will try to put it together 
more slowly or sh and surely until they either have enough to overpower removal or they know through something like a taxi and probe that they have the win. <laughs> when you can't see your face and you just see the bear. You need another nap, I guess. Hmm. Longer nap. Oh my goodness. I love you very much. So, Glistenralf. But, but, the reason that I say that Glistenralf is necessary to the format is that Glistenralf requires you to play those cards. If you didn't have very fast strategies like that, then modern might start to look a little bit like what many, I don't want to say most, that might be right though, standards start to look like, where you just expect the early turns not to mean all that much, and you just, you operate under the assumption that you have enough time to develop to bigger spells. When that is the case in a standard environment, Tom Ross comes in with his boss deck with a bunch of one and two drops and just overpowers the opponents. Because that's the assumption. Um, if you did not have Infect, if you did not have very fast strategies like that, then yeah, opponents would not need as much interaction in the early game. The, the metagame would shift towards higher curve cards. And then the turn four rule would be kind of redundant. You would already have a turn four format anyway, or higher. Um, so that's why I think that Infect and decks like it are actually necessary. Like, you need them. Um, I don't know if that... There is a, a point where that gets to be too much the case, if the deck is too consistent, if it's too resilient. Um, Summer Bloom, or Bloom Titan, or Amulet Bloom, or whatever that deck was called. Uh, <laughs> that deck... was not the most consistent deck, but it was consistent enough. It could kill you before, you know, usually on turn three. Um, so it beat the turn four rule. There you go. I see your pretty hair. Your pretty eyes and pretty hair. And it was also really resilient. There wasn't a lot that your opponent could do. Um, they could path your creature, but Bolt didn't work, Dismember didn't work, that sort of thing. You know, if you didn't have a path and if you didn't hit their hand early enough with Inquo or Thoughtseize even, then you were just, you were out of luck. And that's why the deck was banned. It was too consistent, too resilient, and it killed before turn four. In fact, does not meet all of those criteria. It can kill before turn four, although if you try, you're likely to get blown out because it's not very resilient. I, I like to contrast Infect with something like Bogles, or Hexproof, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Whatever that was back there. Um, Infect makes your creatures more powerful. Twice as powerful, essentially. But at the cost of being less resilient. Bogles is a, sl it's a slower deck, but it's made to fight all of those hate cards. In a format where Lightning Bolt is the most played card, Bogles makes sense. You know, Path to Exile is also up there. Bogles makes sense. You get the idea. So, <laughs> that's that. Now, it's a little more complicated when it comes to Ink Moth Nexus, partially because that one is somewhat more resilient. A little bit. Not entirely. Uh, hand attack won't work on it, but all the good kill spells are still good kill spells against it. It can't be Wrathed, but again, Lightning Bolt, Path to Exile, Dismember, that sort of thing. You get the idea. Um, it's also an artifact, so Instant Speed Artifact Removal works on that, and it doesn't work on Glisten or Elf. I can see... No, no, I can't see the case for banning Ink Moth Nexus. It's even slower than Glisten or Elf. Even though it is a little bit more resilient, it's slower. So, you know, because you have to essentially use up two mana, um, one to activate it, and then you're giving up a mana by attacking with it rather than tapping, uh, in order to go off. So, I, I don't agree with Ink Moth being banned either. Again, if you're going to try to nerf Affinity, I think 
Mox Opal is probably the way to go, for the same reason that Chrome Mox is bad. Just fast mana, but I'm not sure that Affinity needs it. Um, I don't think it's that much of the meta, and it has an issue with consistency. Uh, having seen the deck played quite a bit and having tried it myself, it's powerful, it can kill you before, before turn 4, it has consistency issues, big time. Um, so, and it's somewhat resilient. I mean, everyone packs hate for it. That's part of it too. Everyone, every deck packs hate for Affinity. Alright, so that's it. Kevin, much love. Um, nothing harsh against you, I really don't mean it that way. I, I disagree with you, but... Um, not vehemently. I mean, Glistener Elf's my favorite card in the game. So, but ignoring that sentimentality, I've tried as close to objectively as I know how, uh, without a script or anything, to explain why I think that Glistener Elf isn't too strong uh, for the format. And I think the, the card you put as number one for getting unbanned was Stoneforge Mystic. I, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say demonic tutor that makes your batter skull uncounterable. Uh, I don't think that's really much of an exaggeration. Uh, all right, you ready to go? Say bye bye. I don't even have to say anymore. Just say bye bye. Okay. You, you want to grab the camera? We're gonna turn it into a. Let's look at your face, not mine. Oh my goodness! Yay! Can you say boots? Boots? Can you say spaghettios? Yay. Mm-hmm. What's another one? What's another one? Can you say cookie? No, <laughs> turn it towards me, not me. Turn it towards you. There we go. Alright. I'm having fun with this. I'm having too much fun. We need to cut it short. Alright. Mm -hmm. There's food in there for it. <gasps> hey! Bye bye. As long as she's waving.